I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the bullet ant box. Oh man, that is a creepy feeling, having those ants walking up and over my hand. Oh, something's biting me. Okay, now one of the ants has escaped and is actually out on the table. Be careful, guys. We've got live ants amongst us. There it is, the bullet ant tree. Check out the size of their kingdom. That tree is absolutely massive. I can't believe it has been five years since I was stung by the bullet ant. And at this point, over 50 million of you have enjoyed watching me roll around on the ground in agonizing pain. And I'm sure you're wondering to yourselves, Coyote, why have you returned to this location? Are you going to be stung again? Today, we are celebrating that episode, not only its entertainment, but also the education that came out of it so that you guys could learn about these fascinating insects. Now to up the ante, we have created something called the Bullet Ant Box, which is probably exactly as it sounds, a clear plastic cube that is going to be filled with stinging ants. My hand is going to go inside and we're going to see what happens. Will the bullet ant sting if not provoked? Remember, when I was stung the first time, I physically held an ant to my forearm to induce a sting. I know you guys are thinking, Coyote, we showed up for the stings. Something crazy better happen. I can guarantee you guys this much. This episode is going to be wildly entertaining. So if you guys are ready, let's get started with the bullet ant box. So why in the world do we catch 20 bullet ants and put them inside of this clear plastic container? Now the purpose is not necessarily to induce stings, it's to celebrate the education that you guys have all garnered from our original bullet ant episode. My entire arm feels like it's having a spasm right now. But today we're going to determine whether or not the bullet ant truly is an angry little creature. What I'm going to do today is gently place my hand and forearm into this box and set it down. I want to see if the ants will just walk around on me and not get aggressive. I know what you guys are thinking, Coyote, we showed up to see some stings and some craziness, so we're really hoping you get stung 20 times, maybe more, because remember, these ants can sting more than once. Now, just in case something catastrophic does happen, we also have an epinephrine pen, just in case I go into anaphylactic shock. This Panera toxin is extremely potent, and to be honest with you, I have no idea how my body will react if I'm stung a second time. So it's always good to take safety as a precaution, and if I have to inject myself with the EpiPen, of course, that's gonna be just as entertaining as all of the stings. Yes, bullet ants bite, but it's the sting, which is armed with a paralyzing neurotoxic peptide known as paneurotoxin that is responsible for putting its victim in tears. When it's injected into your bloodstream, it specifically attacks the central nervous system, causing extreme pain that is often compared to the burning sensation of a bullet wound. No reported cases of death have ever been associated with this sting, but depending on venom yield, side effects can include massive swelling, limb paralysis, hallucinations, and muscular discomfort that can last for nearly 36 hours. Yep. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the bullet ant box. Here we go. One, two, three. Right now, I am just trying my best to keep my calm. The ants are definitely crawling all over my hand. A lot of heat is likely registering off of my skin. So far, no bites, no stings. My heart is going about a million miles a second right now. Now, what I don't want to do is shake my hand around with any sudden movements. If I do that, all I'm going to do is make the ants angry. Oh man, that is a creepy feeling, having those ants walking up and over my hand. I'm gonna try to keep my hand in there for as long as I possibly can. I'm just trying to control my heart rate at the moment. I'm trying not to move my hand. The ants are crawling around, they are investigating. Now they have incredible sensory organs in their antennas, so they can definitely sense that this is something alien in their environment. 
At this point, they are most likely trying to find a way to get out of the bullet ant box. Oh, I think I'm getting bit on my wrist. Something's biting me. No sting, but I'm definitely getting nibbled at. And the thing about your hands and your wrist is that they are extremely sensitive, a lot of nerve endings. So if I do end up getting stung, it's going to be extremely painful. I'm going to gently turn my hand like this, just to give them another option, if they so choose. Nothing happening. The ants actually seem to be doing their best to avoid my hand. Now, if I took my hand and shoved it into the nest of a bullet ant, their immediate defense is going to be to defend the colony. Inside this plastic box, the ants don't necessarily feel as if they need to defend something. Okay, now one of the ants has escaped and is actually out on the table. Be careful guys, we've got live ants amongst us. Now you guys may recall that there's a little, sorry, so nervous at the moment, even though I'm not being stung yet. Now one really interesting thing that I know you guys have commented on in the comments section is the bullet ant gloves, which is a very famous tradition in South America that young boys will go through to essentially transition between boyhood and manhood. And the reason that people are stung inside of those bullet ant gloves is because the ants are actually woven into the palm leaves. Those ants, once they wake up, they realize that they're trapped and they begin to sting. Those stings then become the hallucination that these young boys go through and eventually the spiritual journey to transition between boyhood and manhood. At the moment, these ants are not being pressed into my skin. I actually have an ant right here, walking up on the table, kind of getting surrounded by them. And I am not being stung because the ants are not feeling restrained. A couple of them are escaping, that is completely fine. They will just find their way back up into the forest and eventually back to the colony. And I think what we have ultimately proven at this point is that while the bullet ant may be intimidating, if you are not threatening them, if you're not pressing them down on your skin or attacking their home, they have absolutely no reason to bite, let alone sting you. I gotta say, I'm truly thankful for all that the bullet ants have given us thus far. I don't think we could have performed a better experiment to celebrate the five-year anniversary of Stung by a Bullet Ant. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. I know you were all hoping for an onslaught of vicious stings so that we could have a good laugh watching me roll around on the ground like a big baby. It's fair to admit, I was nervous at first, but I'm glad I was not stung because it helps us recognize the bullet ants are not aggressive toward humans unless provoked. If you stomp on their mound or hold one to your arm with a pair of forceps, you're going to get stung. Otherwise, they simply want to go about their peaceful existence as they forage for food in the rainforest. Brave Wilderness found a creative way to put the bullet ant in a very bright spotlight. And in turn, this little insect helped us drive forward a brand that now promotes conservation and shares education around the world. When you really sit back and think about it, it's a pretty cool story. So to you, bullet ant, we say thank you for being such a super cool creature. Oh, it's stuck in my arm! It's stuck in my arm! Oh, oh, the stinger's stuck in my arm! Look at that!